Amen. <laughs> About poured it all out this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, we're going to turn to the book of uh, uh, Matthew tonight, chapter 8. The book of Matthew tonight in chapter 8. Hallelujah. I'm going to pour in a little bit of oil tonight. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Don't get mad. Amen. At the preacher. Don't get mad at the messenger. Amen. Just to let God change you. Amen. Hey, we, sometimes we want to come into the church and I can see by the attitude of folks that we're going to we're gonna pout and all this kind of thing. Don't pout. Don't get mad. Amen. Listen to me. What you want to do is let Jesus change you. Hallelujah. Amen. God ain't going to help you soak there. He's going to try to pull you out of that and give you the opportunity to do the right thing and to believe God by faith. Faith never soaks and faith never pouts. Can I see here an amen? And there. I want to tell you the truth. Faith never pouts. Faith never sulks. Faith never feels sorry for itself. Faith believes God. Faith, with faith there is hope. With faith there is trust. With hey, faith there is believing God. With faith there is victory. With faith there is power. With faith there is answered prayer. Somebody ought to shout amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now listen, if you want to get filled with the Holy Ghost tonight or you are seeking for the baptism of the Holy Ghost tonight, then come on, pray with us tonight. Amen. If you just need a refilling, if you need a renewing, maybe maybe you speak in tongues but you're running low on the oil. Is there anybody to be, amen, say, Pastor, pray for me. That's me tonight. Amen. Maybe that's you. Maybe, maybe I speak in tongues. Hallelujah. Listen, I can tell whether you speak in tongues or not. Now listen, whether you talk in tongues or not, I can tell whether you are filled with the oil or not by your disposition by your hunger for the word or the lack thereof amen it's true it's true praise God hallelujah glory to God all right Matthew where are we at tonight Matthew in chapter 8 verse 5 Matthew chapter 8 verse 5 I'm going to read from the new King James at first and then I'll go to the King James Oh, church, where are we? God, give me the strength tonight. Amen. Can y'all give me a little bit of y'all strength? Amen. Anybody got any extra strength tonight? Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. Now, when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home, paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. Now, this, this servant is in pain. This servant is in agony. This servant is paralyzed, can't move, don't exactly know what he has. And Jesus said to him, I'll come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word, and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. Now, if y'all, if there's anybody that's ever been in the military, you know exactly what this is. In fact, I want to say military folk make excellent Christians. They do. With, with their saved, they're born again. They, have, they understand what it means to be under the authority of God, Okay. And when Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found, listen to this, such great faith, not even in Israel. Now, this guy's a Gentile, a Roman centurion, a soldier. <laughs> and Jesus is scratching his head saying, Man, I had not seen such faith, not even in Israel, not with even my own people. Mm -hmm. All right. And I'll say to you that many will come from the east and west and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the sons of the kingdom will be cast out into outer darkness. He's talking about the Sadducees, the Pharisees, and those that think they have salvation because they're descendants of Abraham and so forth. And they'll be weeping and gnashing the teeth. And then Jesus said to the centurion, go your way as you have believed so let it be done for you and his servant was healed that same hour amen praise God well tonight for a little bit I'd like to minister on the thought to only believe only believe turn to the person next to you and say only believe only believe hallelujah praise God only believe hallelujah Lord help us to believe and if you'll believe I know God will answer that prayer God will meet that need God will heal that sick body praise God thank you Father let's pray together Heavenly Father I thank you for the opportunity tonight to minister and to preach thy word Lord I'm tired in body but I pray tonight for the unction and the power of the Holy Ghost let open up heaven pour out 
out your spirit, I pray, upon us in this house. Give us ears to hear. Be receptive of thy truth and respond by faith tonight. I'm asking you to give the church a blessing. You are the blessing. Your presence is the blessing. Your word is the blessing. Your truth is the blessing, Father. And I thank you, God. We want to give you all the glory and the praise and the honor as we ask this in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen and amen. You may be seated and the Lord bless you. Only believe. Hallelujah. I mean, the people in whom God delights in are going to be those who rest upon the word without doubting. Hallelujah. We got to come to God by faith. When we open the word of God, when we read the word of God, when we listen to the word of God, teach the word of God, preach the word of God, let's open our heart and let's respond and believe by faith. The Bible says this, whatever's not of faith is sin. Therefore, doubting God's word is sin because doubt never comes out of faith, but rather doubt comes out of unbelief. This stems from the lower nature or the carnal nature or the fleshly man or the old endemic nature. That's where all doubt and unbelief come out of. But faith comes out of that new creation that's in Christ Jesus. Bible said that you are a new creation in Christ. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. And so in that new creation, out of that where Christ dwells, that's where faith and belief come from. Praise God. Listen, God is nothing for the man who wavers. For they're like the wave of the sea driven by the wind tossed in every direction, back and forth, back and forth, never receiving anything from God. Because why? Bible says that they're unstable in all their ways. James talks about this. These people are unstable. They're, they're this way. They're that way. You don't know. They're unfaithful. You can't count on them. You don't know if they're going to show up or not. You don't know what they believe from one minute to the next. They're just back and forth, back and forth. I grew up in California the first 14 years of my life. Always lived very close to the beach. I remember uh, living in uh, uh, different parts of California, the Manhattan Beach and so forth. And I was about seven blocks away from the beach and I would take my bicycle and it was all downhill all the way to the beach and I'd go down there and spend time there in the water and so forth and then it was but uphill all the way back you know things like this Ventura California I live pretty close to the beach I'd always take my bicycle and ride over there but I used to uh, have a boogie board and I didn't get into surfing I never did surf but I liked the boogie board and, and so I'd go out there in the ocean I'd go in the waves and those waves would come crashing against me and some days are worse than others and, and they would hit me and I'd they push me this way and they'd push me that way you know and so that's kind of what I thought about with that scripture if you just try to stand there and sometimes I would try to do that to challenge those waves and I'm going to stand there I'm going to see if they can knock me over and so I dare to, and I defy those waves to come and try to knock me over and how many know that they'd knock me over amen they'd win every time some waves would be bigger than others but I had a boogie board and I thought you know what I'm going to defend and I'm going to block that wave and so I put that boogie board up there and that wave came and I held that boogie board as hard as I could and I stood in that sand in that water as hard as I could and that wave came and crashed up against me and uh, snapped my boogie board in half. That's what it did. Amen. But a person that doubts, a person that doesn't have faith, a person that doesn't believe, they're back and forth unstable in every way. Friend, can I say, only believe because all things are possible with God. If we'll only believe him by faith, I want you to get this down in your soul tonight. Believe God trust him by faith Proverbs 3, 5 and 6 trust in the Lord with all your heart lean not on your own understanding and all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path, God will give direction, God will guide you God will lead you, tells you not alone the Lord will help you, praise the Lord friend we gotta believe God by faith God has a plan beyond anything that we could ever know I mean he has a plan for every individual of life and if we have any other plan in mind, then we'll miss the grandest plan of all. Ephesians 3 and 20. Look at this with me tonight. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Now help me read this again. Unto him that's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power 
that worketh uh, in us. Hallelujah. My friend, uh, nothing in the past is equal to the present. Uh, nothing in the present can equal the things of tomorrow. Tomorrow, listen, should be soul filled with holy expectation uh, that we'll be a living flames for the Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to know this. He's not a dead God. It's not a dead Bible. It's not a dead, uh, a dead religion uh, that we're a part of, but it's a living Savior, a living God, and he dwells inside of your heart. He's not in the tomb. He's not in the grave, but he is risen. He's alive, and that resurrected life lives inside of you. We can, as the church, as Christians and believers, live in holy expectation of what God might do today, what God might do tonight, what God might do tomorrow, or the next day, or the next day, or the next day. The church can be so filled with the Holy Ghost and power that it can turn the known world upside down. We can touch this city. I mean, think about this. I mean, some people, I mean, all they do to church is show up and that's it. That's all they do. Hold on. Mm -hmm. They don't put any effort into it. They don't put any faith into it. They don't try. They don't worship. They don't sing. They don't pray. They don't enter in. They don't do anything. Amen. Don't think that you're going to receive anything of God. You got to put something into this. You got to believe the Lord by faith. Hallelujah. You know, when you're digging a well in the olden days, when you would dig a well, you'd have to take a shovel and you have to dig down before you strike water. You can't just stand there and look at it thinking the water's going to come up. You got to put some faith into it. You got to put some effort into it. You got to put some work into it. You got to believe God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Now, I have to take a moment just to visit the story here of this centurion soldier. We see the account of the gospel according to Matthew. The centurion soldier's servant is sick. Uh, don't exactly know what it is, but very sick. Servant was at the centurion's home, very sick with some kind of palsy and grievously tormented. Jesus said, I'll come and I'll heal him. But notice the centurion does something uh, that might catch a lot of people off guard. He said that Jesus, uh, Jesus, he didn't have to come to his house because all he has to do is just say the word. That's all you got to do, Lord. Just say the word. Just say the word. Just say the word. Oh, praise God. Save me, Lord, and I'll be saved. Heal me, Lord, and I'll be healed. Just say the word. Oh, hallelujah. How many know that the word of God makes a difference? His voice makes a difference. I just need to hear from heaven. I need to hear from God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hey Amen. That's all he said. Now he said, you don't have to come to my house. He said, you just speak the word, and I know it'll be done. You don't have to be there physically, Jesus, because the centurion knew this, that your word is enough. Come on, somebody help me preach this tonight. The word of God is enough. Hallelujah. You know, when I was going through a terrible time of sickness, and I needed a word from the Lord, I needed answers. In my faith, I was struggling. But I know this one thing. I know that God is the healer. And I'd read in the Old Testament, and I'd read in the New Testament, and all the places uh, and all the books and all the chapters uh, where Jesus touched, uh, where Jesus healed and that strengthened my faith uh, and I said, Lord, I was desperate uh, I was in a very difficult position uh, I didn't know what was going to happen the next day or the next, but I said, God if you did it for them, you can do it for me, yeah. glory to God all I need is the word of almighty God just speak the word <laughs> But I, I, I had to, I, I was desperate for God. Trevor, I was desperate. Nobody else can do it for me. I got lovely people in this church and every prayer meeting and just about every service, I would call the church and I'd say, church, I need you to pray for me. Come up here and lay hands on me. Pray for me. And I love them all to dear. I love them so much, but I got, so I got a feeling some nights they're probably tired of praying, but they prayed anyway. <laughs> I remember, I remember one time I was so, I was so bad. The situation was so bad. I, I just couldn't get out. I couldn't get outside the house or go outside in the public. And I remember one night, it was a Sunday night, and I couldn't make it to church that day, that night. And I, I remember that it was a cold, rainy night, Sunday night. And uh, my wife had texted me and she said, I want you to sit by the front door. Just sit down by the front door because you got a group of people coming over from the church tonight. And they're not going to come in. They're not going to bother you. But they're going to lay hands on that door and pray for you. Hallelujah. 
Oh, I can hear their prayers. I can hear their prayers coming through that door. You know what I'm talking about, folks. When you're desperate, you gotta have God. You gonna, you gotta have the Lord. Oh, hallelujah! I gotta have God. I gotta have an answer. I gotta have the Word. I need something from heaven. I need the Lord to step in. I need the great physician because nobody can heal me. Nobody can do anything for me. All I know is that it's gonna be God or it's over. Either God touches me or it's over. But I'm here to tell you tonight that I serve a God that heals a God that delivers. Hallelujah. He has touched me multiple times and healed me multiple times. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hold on, folks. I'm just going to bask in the presence of God tonight. Thank the Lord. I'm going to thank the Lord tonight because sometimes I forget how good God's been and what he's done for me. God, my Lord, your hand is on this church. Your hand is on our life. Your hand is on this ministry. Sister Laura Lee, he's a faithful God. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Amen. Here today because of the Lord, listen to me. If you're here and you're struggling with some kind of illness or sickness or whatever it might be, don't give up. Don't count God out. He hears you. He knows your name. He knows everything about you. He walks with you. He talks with you. And I believe in God for a miracle. Church, don't give up. Don't give up. Oh, man. This is powerful. I mean, to tell you, most of us would be like, yes, Jesus, I need you to come to my house. Jairus, you know, his daughter is dying. He needed Jesus to come to his house. But if the servant's going to be healed, then you got to be there. But not with the centurion. He was broken before the Lord. He was humble and lowly. He said to Jesus in Matthew 8 and 8, Lord, I'm not worthy that, you, that thou shouldest come under my roof. I'm not worthy. Now, I don't know. I got a feeling that if... If Trevor was preaching this, he'd probably come at this with the angle of the centurion. I don't know. He'd come at this different. <laughs> he got different ways of looking, which I love. Hallelujah. He'd be, he'd be coming, coming this way or that way or whatever it might be, you know. But all you have to do is just speak the word and my servant will be healed. And Jesus said, I've not found so great faith. No, not in Israel. Notice Jesus said great faith in Matthew 8 and 10. Now, what is great faith? Not to make it hard or difficult, difficult or complicated. I believe that it's faith that doesn't walk by sight. It's faith that believes God and his word. It's faith that knows that with God all things are possible. It's faith that believes God against all odds and all circumstances. I believe it's a faith like David had when he stood up against the giant Goliath. In the natural, David was no match against that giant Philistine. I mean, David didn't have the armor. He didn't have the experience. He was just a young boy, probably about 17 years old. In the natural, most have placed their bets on Goliath. This giant would tear David to pieces. But that would be only in the natural. But how many know that we're not walking by the natural? We're walking by the supernatural. We're walking by faith. By faith. By not what you see. But we walk by what we don't see. But yet we see. Amen. You know, in the supernatural, things are a little different. I mean, David didn't have the armor. He didn't have the experience. He didn't have the knowledge. Uh, he didn't have the strength. He didn't have the skill. But he had faith. Amen. A five-letter word, F-A-I-T-H. He had faith, faith, faith. This young lad, 17 years old. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Get them young people. Get them full of God. Get them saved. Get them full of the Holy Ghost. And they might outshine some of the older folk. When it comes to faith, I mean, he had faith in God, faith in God's power, faith in the God of Israel. And now that David had faith in God, David had access to everything that was in heaven. I want you to see that. He had access to everything. He had access to power. He had access to glory. He had access, he had access to God. He had access to victory. He had access to, to the Lord to fight his battles. He had access to everything we have. We can come to God by faith. Faith is the key that opens the door to all the blessings and benefits that we have through Jesus Christ. Oh, church, come on, let faith arise. Let faith arise. Let faith arise tonight. Hallelujah. You want to be healed. You want the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You need to be feeling. Believe him by faith. A 17-year-old, Goliath, is like, and yeah, right. 
He said, I'm going to give your carcasses to the birds. There ain't going to be nothing left of you. That's the devil. <laughs> That's the devil saying that. Mm hmm. Can you imagine what one person can do in this city if they just had the faith of David? Listen to David's faith come out. He said this in 1 Samuel 17, 45. He said, you come to me with the sword, with the spear, and with the javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. I can almost see David pointing that finger at him. <laughs> I come to you in the name of the God of the Lord of hosts. The God of Israel. Amen. Devil. Come on there. <laughs> Devil, you're no longer going to have your way in my marriage. You're not going to have your way in my life. You're not going to have your way in my head. Like Brother, Brother Scott said, I put up a sign that says, no vacancy. Put that light blinking out there. No vacancy. You're not coming in my thoughts. You're not coming in my mind. You're not coming in my home. You're not coming in my children. You're not coming in my grandchildren. You're not coming in my life or my job or my church or my ministry or my marriage. Devil. You can't do just anything you want to do. I'm not under your feet, but now that I'm saved, born again, filled with the Holy Ghost, you are under my feet. True. Man, somebody, hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. You know, some folk in churches, you know, and they, why do you get so excited? If you ever knew the, the, my master, if you ever knew Jesus, you get excited too. If you're born again, you get excited too. You feel the Holy Ghost, you get excited too. Because the truth that's being preached will resonate with the truth that's already inside of your spirit. The Holy Ghost is truth. You get excited about a football game. Get excited about a basketball game. Get excited about a baseball game. Get excited about going out to eat your favorite restaurant. But you can't get excited about Jesus. Come on. Hallelujah. Get excited about your idols. But don't get excited about your Jesus. Come on. Hallelujah. Well, folks, listen, I get excited about the Lord. I love talking about Jesus. I love talking about the Bible. My wife and I, we talk about scriptures. We talk about the Lord in our home. Do you husbands and wives talk about the Lord in your home? Do you pray together? Do you talk about Jesus? Do you talk about what the Lord is doing? Do you talk about uh, what the scriptures say? Do you just do you just talk about these things? And, and there are times, you know, God's uh, dealing with my wife or God has showed my wife something and then God showed me something and we come and join our thoughts together and find out God's showing us the same thing. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I like that. Amen. I like that. I enjoy that. I'm praying that husbands are spending time with the Lord with their wives and wives are spending time with the Lord with their husbands. Amen. Praise God. Well, I see this with David. Do you see it? Do you hear it? That's what faith sounds like. This is what faith does. He said, I come to you the name of the Lord, a host of God of the armies of Israel whom you've defied. And David ran towards that giant Philistine and took a stone out of his pouch, out of his sack and put it in a sling and he slung it towards that giant and that rock. God the Holy Ghost I believe got a hold of that stone right in the middle of mid flight. Amen. Hit Goliath that giant right between the eyes and that's the day the giant was taken down and David had the victory. How many know that our heavenly David Jesus Christ the King of Kings and Lord of Lords has given us the victory through the cross. Hallelujah. We've got the victory. Amen. And there might be some Philistines in your life that need to be taken down. Some of us might need to rise up and put a stone in our slingshot and believe God by faith. And when we do, the giants will come down. Amen. The giants will be destroyed. How about the giant of doubt? How about the giant of fear? How about the giant of unbelief? The giant of anger, the giant of lust or pride, the giant of selfishness, the giant of self-centeredness. These are giants that need to be taken down in our lives. Take the stone and put it in the sling and cast it by faith and bring those things down. Listen to me. Don't sit there and do nothing. Don't sit there and soak in your despair. Don't sit there and soak in your anger. Get up out of your seat. Run to this altar and fall on your face repenting before God and seek his holy face for forgiveness and God 
will forgive and God will restore and God will change you. And you walk up a changed person with the joy of the Lord, which will be your strength. Don't just sit there and try to do it your own way because you can't deliver you. Only God can deliver you. Only God. Lord, have mercy. got something real special here that world out there doesn't have this life this world out here doesn't have the the bible it doesn't have the lord it doesn't have his presence doesn't have his power doesn't have his glory doesn't have his grace doesn't have it it's not there friends doesn't have it they don't have it they're not even open today anyway which is a good thing amen but i'm just saying it's not out there Amen. We are a holy habitation unto God. This is holy ground. The presence of the Lord is in this place. Amen. There are giants that need to be taken down in our lives. Take the stone and sling it and cast it by faith. Listen, because of the centurion's faith, his servant was healed. Listen, he wasn't even an Israelite. He was a Gentile. He wasn't a descendant of David or Abraham. He was a Gentile, but he believed God. Faith crosses all denominational lines. Doesn't matter where you're from, rich or poor. Doesn't matter the color of your skin or the denomination, if you have faith in God, the Lord will hear, the Lord will answer. Jesus said, go thy way as thou hast believed, and so be it done unto thee. And the Bible said his servant was healed in the same self hour. Amen. I believe that to, I believe that due to our lack of believing, our lack of faith, and our lack of trusting in God's word, that we hold back the blessings of God upon our lives. Don't blame God. Don't blame somebody else. It's us. The Bible tells us there's more. God says there's more. So why don't we believe him for more? Jesus said whatever things you ask, it, and when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you will have them. In Mark 11 and 24. Sometimes we want to make faith so hard. We want to make it so difficult. What, but what God is looking for is a faith that will believe him like a child, a childlike faith, a simple faith, believing, trusting. Jesus said, unless we become as little children in Mark 10 and 15. And I believe God is trying to tell us something. He's saying that, that I see every need, that, that with God nothing is impossible. Believe by faith and walk by faith and ask by faith. And He's Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who provides. And just before Abraham was to put that dagger into eye, he said, God stopped him. He said, don't harm the lad. And there Abraham looked and there's a ram caught in the thicket. He's Jehovah. He revealed himself to Abraham as Jehovah Jireh. I'm the Lord that will provide. Jesus took our sin. He took our shame. He took our past. He took our guilt. Oh, thank God. And they, amen. He took our judgment so that we would not have to. He's the ram caught in the thicket. He did it for you and I because he loved us. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. I've got a book in my office that's written by uh, about the beginning days of Brother Jimmy Swigert. I've shared this story before to this church. Maybe some of you heard it. Some of you might have not. Uh, but the book is titled Across a River. I don't even know if it's in print anymore. Maybe it is. It's a good book to learn, a good book to read. It just amazes me to see the hand of God upon uh, Jimmy Swigert's life at a young age and how God used him and how God blessed him and how God provided for him. Not that it was easy because it wasn't easy. He endured many hardships in ministry, but God was always faithful. In the book, it tells a story about his grandmother and about his grandfather who lived during the war times in Faraday, Louisiana. Faraday, Louisiana, just a place where Brother Jimmy Swigert was born and raised. Just a small town, but a great deal of Brother Swigert's faith came from watching his grandmother pray and touch God and touch heaven. Amen. How many know that our example is so very important? Amen. I mean, he'd come into the living room. He'd come into the house, and there she is crying out to God. He'd come in the, in the house, and there she'd be in the kitchen doing the dishes, and there she is praying. There she is singing. There she is crying out to God. There she is glorifying the Lord, touching heaven, heaven touching her. And he saw this over and over, day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year. And she told Brother Swagger, we serve a big God, so believe for big things. Believe big. And I need to remember this. And you may need to remember this. Amen. Get it in your spirit. Get it in your heart to believe God. He's a big God. He's not some little incy wincy peensy little dog God. He's a big God. He's a big God. He's a big God. He's a big God. He just has to speak the word. 
But although Brother Swaggart's grandmother was saved and filled with the Holy Ghost and believed in Christ, uh, his grandfather was not. And his grandfather was a sheriff of Faraday, and he was also a farmer. He was a tough man, a strong man, a man, a man's man, if you know what I mean. And you didn't mess with this guy. And they said he can go into a bar room and break up a fight without a gun. And he's a tough man. And he was he was tough, tough. And uh, one year they were going through a drought. It had not rained in some time. And all the crops were dying. And he had about 10 acres of land in which he had planted cotton. But without the rain, everything would dry up. And they would lose uh, quite a bit of money. And so Brother Swagger's grandmother asked her husband, uh, his grandfather, that if God sends the rain, uh, will you pay tithe uh, on the cotton? He said, if God sends the rain he would do just that he'd pay tithe on the cotton and so she grabbed him took him off to the pastor's house of the assembly god church that she was attending at the time and she told the pastor if god sends the rain that her husband will pay tithe on the cotton and so that grandmother brother swagger's grandmother grabbed a hold of of the, her husband and grab a hold of that pastor and she prayed right there believing God to send the rain and then when she when she prayed uh, after she had prayed she said that's it it's done God's going to send the rain and she knew God there was something within her spirit that knew that God heard and that God answered and God was going to show himself real and alive and so they went home and she took out uh, the rain barrels and we don't see those much anymore these days but whenever it would rain they were used to put out the rain barrels to catch the rain so they can have extra water Next water would be used for doing the the washing and doing the laundry and doing the the dishes and the plants and things, watering the plants and things like that. My my mom and dad over in uh, Rockwall, Texas, I just came back from there, but they've got a a big old rain barrel. I don't know, I think it's a pretty good size, uh, and it's just in the corner of their house, and I think it's filled with capacity. They've had a lot of rain here lately. And and so that's the rain barrel. You can take water out of there, and you can water your plants or whatever you want to do with that. And so she got out her rain barrels, uh, cleaned them out, and set them out in the yard all different places in the yard. People would come by and look as if she was strange and asked her what she was doing and she told them that she was cleaning out the rain barrels because she's getting ready for the rain. Come on Trevor. Gotta get ready for the rain. Get ready for the rain. Get ready for the rain. Elijah told Ahab eat and drink. Get yourself ready because there's rain coming. I hear the sound of abundance of rain. You want revival? You want the Holy Ghost? You want the baptism? You want the refilling? You want God? Come on, get your rain barrels. Get ready. People thought she was whacked out. They thought she was strange. Most folk think that people that are close to God are strange. Amen. Her husband thought she lost it. But she believed God and his word. And they they prayed and she believed that it was going to rain. And so... They, they went to bed back in those days. Some folks, uh, they went to bed pretty early. When it was dark, they went to bed. Now, they didn't have Internet, and they didn't have the computers, and they didn't have cell phones, and they couldn't get on their maps, and, and they couldn't see if there was any uh, clouds or sky or uh, any rain coming, any storm or anything like that coming. So they went to bed kind of early. But in the middle of the night, they woke up to thunder and lightning as it began to rain. And the rain came just as God had told her. God answered, God blessed, and God met that need. Listen to the scriptures. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Listen to what God said. He said if my people will do that, if the church will do that, if the church will repent, if the church will get serious, if the church will pray, if the church will cry out, if my Christians, if saints of God, if my children will call upon my name, he said I'll hear from heaven. I'll forgive their sin. I'll heal the lion. I'll send the rain. I'll send the rain. I'll send the rain. That's what that is. God said, I'll heal the land. When he pours out the Holy Ghost, it'll be healed. When he pours out the form of the latter rain, it'll be healed, healed, healed. Hey, man, you might start having the other half of these folks in this church come back on Sunday night. <laughs> what's more important? Right now, you see, you're, you're, what you're saying is that His word's not important. My time with God's not important. He's not important. I can worship Him my own way. I can do it how I want out on the golf course. Well, 
out in that fishing boat. I, I was going to write down all the excuses one day. But I found out that if I did, there would be so many volumes, it wouldn't have a place to store them. <laughs> Lord, no matter what you do, it doesn't change a thing. It's got to be God that deals with them. Amen. It's got to be the Lord. It's got to be God. Can't get folks mad. You get mad anyway. <laughs> they get mad easy, don't they? And so I believe that a great deal of our problem today is that we have put away our rain barrels. We don't come expected anymore. Some of us have stored them away. Perhaps they've sold them in a garage sale, and the church is no longer believing God for the rain. I'll tell you what, if you come believing God for the rain on Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, Tuesday night prayer, I tell you, sometimes the rain falls on Tuesday night. We have some good services on Tuesday night. You folks are more than welcome to come and be a part of that if you haven't been able to do that. Amen. Amen. But I don't know what it is. What am I saying? We need to do it. What we need to do is to get out our rain barrels and believe God. Go to your garage. Go to your attic. Check the basement. Get your, get your rain barrels and clean them out. Prepare your barrels for rain. Believe God to answer your prayer. Do what Jesus said. He said in Mark 11 and 22, have faith in God. Get out your rain barrel and clean it out. Get the junk out of it. Get, get rid of uh, all those things that hinder it from being filled up and let God fill your rain barrel. Let God fill it up. Let God pour out a blessing. Let him fill you up. Jesus said, I've come that they may have life and they may have it more abundantly, that overflowing life, abundant life. A lot of times God can't fill up our rain barrels because there's too much trash in it. There's too much garbage in it. Our barrels are filled with dirt, with spider webs, with debris, with cobwebs. We quit believing by faith. We don't bring them out anymore. Somewhere along the way, we quit believing for more. And so now, you know, when, when, we, when we used to be a time, you know, when, when, the, when the husband and wife got ready for Sunday morning, got the kids ready, go, we're going to go to church. Hey, man, that wife said, husband, did you get that rain barrel? I got that rain barrel. It's in the car. Well, good thing. We need that rain barrel. I come believe in God. I, I need a touch. I need an answer. I need, I need, God, to, I need God to move. I, I come with expectation. And, oh, yeah, honey, I've got the rain barrel. Sunday night, do you have the rain barrel? I've got the rain barrel. Wednesday night, prayer meeting. Do you have the rain barrel? I've got the rain barrel. But come somewhere along the way, she began to ask, do you have the rain barrel? I said, oh, I forgot it tonight. That's all right. Well, we'll just try next time. And so then it was hit and miss. And then it got to where he just didn't bring it at all. And then it got to where she just quit asking don't come expecting anymore I don't come I just come I just show up because I know I'm supposed to you're not going to receive anything with that kind of attitude you're not going to get anything with God with that kind of attitude you got to get them you got to get them spider webs man I've got spider webs everywhere hallelujah the other day we saw a cobweb in the sanctuary get that thing out cobweb symbolizes death get that thing out of here Spiders. Ooh. I don't like spiders. Man, I tell you, last week, over a week ago, I got bit by a spider. Yeah, right there. It still hurts. Right there. Go ahead. Feel sorry for me. Go ahead. Come on. Help. A little bit more. A little bit more. <laughs> hurt, man. And uh, I thought it was a pimple. I tried to pop it. That was a mistake. And the thing swelled up, turned red, got all hot and warm and, and swollen. I don't know what kind it was, but it was some kind of spider. And so last night it was on my back deck. And I was studying out there and, uh, you know, preparing for this morning. And I was texting my daughter Morgan back and forth just a little bit. And I told her about this spider. She got bit by a spider once real bad. And so I told her about, I got bit by a spider. Maybe you think of you, not as bad as what you had. She got bit by a brown recluse. I didn't get bit by a brown recluse. But anyway, she got, you know, so we're talking a little bit back. You know, and I've got my doctrines book right there on the table. And as I'm texting her, I look up and, lo and behold, there's a spider on my doctrines book. A spider on the holy doctrines book. Lord, have mercy. 
Hey, man, that might have been the one that bit me. Hallelujah. Can I just tell you this? In the name of Jesus, there ain't no spider anymore. Amen. <laughs> my Lord, hallelujah. Lord, have mercy. God, I took a picture of it. I'll prove it to you. I've got it on my phone. Hallelujah. Looks like a brown recluse, but it's not. Amen. It's just kin to it, but it's not. Okay. Amen. But I just tell you, folks, uh, we got to get the spiders uh, and the cobwebs out of our out of our out of our barrels. Amen. Amen. Somewhere we got to start believing. Hold on. Amen. Hallelujah. Just keep on preaching. Amen. Somewhere along the way, we quit believing God by faith. Somewhere along the way, we quit believing for more. Folks, let me tell you something. Let me encourage you tonight. There's blessing in that rain barrel. There's baptism of the Holy Ghost in that rain barrel. There's joy in there. There's peace in there. Hallelujah. There's love. There's power. There's answer and prayer in that rain barrel. Amen. There's the form in the latter rain. There's a refilling in that rain barrel. There are needs met. Bills paid. Souls saved. Bondage is broken. Marriages are restored in that rain barrel. But you have to do one thing. You have to get your barrels out of storage. Amen. That's right. You know, you know. I know how we are. You know, it's just it's like uh, if we're not going to use it, you know, but maybe just a few times a year. We put it in a storage unit that we that we pay for rent that goes there. And uh, if we're going to use it maybe more often, maybe every once in a while more than the storage unit, we'll, we'll put it in, in the attic. At least we know it's there. Or, or, or we'll put it in the basement if we might want to have easier access to it. Or we'll, we'll store it out there in the garage. But, folks, listen, when you use something all the time, you have it right there in front of you in your home, in your house, easy access to get to at all times. Hallelujah. Make sure that you have the word of God at, dispose, at your disposal at all times. Make sure you have your faith at your disposal at all times. Make sure you have access to God. Hallelujah. Get your rain barrel out. Get it cleaned up. Get it ready for the former and the latter rain. Get it ready for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Get it ready for the refilling. Get it ready for answered prayer. Oh, hallelujah. Get your barrel out of storage. You have to start believing God for more. You have to have faith in God. You have to walk by faith, not by sight, not by circumstances. What am I saying tonight? Only believe. Believe big because he's a big God. Jesus said in all things, whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, believing you shall receive. Listen to that. And you shall have them. Therefore, I say unto you, help me read this. What, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Amen. Everything in this church and ministry has been a step of faith. This whole, this whole thing from the beginning, from buying the building to purchasing a bus to building the garage to buying the vans to believing for the property that's now ours and paying the bills. And, and, and it's going to take a step of faith, uh, uh, believing God for that building, for that boy's ministry. That, that's a faith. That's, that's a faith walk. Hallelujah. Would you stand with me tonight, please? Praise God. Hey Amen. Stand with me tonight. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God is good. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen, church. Who will step in that Jordan River with me? Who will step in that Jordan River? Praise God. Who will step in that Jordan River? Hallelujah. Who will go the extra mile with me? Who will believe God to take down the giants with me? Who's going to believe God? Who will go with me to watch around the Jericho walls so they can come tumbling down? Who will ask God for the impossible with me? Who will get out their rain barrels with me? Hallelujah. I need some folks. And I tell you, I, what a difference it makes, but what a blessing it is. When you have folks that are like-minded and you have folks that get out their rain barrels with you. And they say, Pastor, I've come to church and I've got my rain barrel. Hallelujah. Praise God. We're believing God with you. We're trusting God with you. We're joining with you in this church and ministry. We've got our rain barrel. We're ready. We're expecting. We're believing God by faith. Amen. Maybe some of you are watching tonight and you need to get your rain barrels out. You Maybe you haven't, answered, haven't had answered prayer. Maybe you haven't heard from heaven. Maybe heaven seems silent. You haven't heard from the Lord. It could be that we're not coming expecting God anymore. Whatever it might be. Whatever it might be, I just want you to get your rain barrel out. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, I was watching SBN, and, and uh, there's a 
there's a couple songs right now that are really ministering to my heart. I, I got to tell Abby about them. Maybe we can learn them, but they've really been ministering. And one of them is called This Blood. I don't know if you heard that song, but my Lord, my Lord, this blood, this blood. And, uh, and I told you this before about getting, going around the octagon and around the altars there at that church. And, and many times, you know, when, you're, when you go to that altar call and people are gathered around and you'll see little children, tears running down their cheeks, speaking in tongues, just worshiping the Lord. That to me is so precious. That is so powerful. That is so wonderful and glorious and marvelous to see those tender hearts, to come to God with a childlike faith. And I see Jesus touching them. The same Jesus that's in Baton Rouge is the same Jesus that's in Marion, Ohio. It's the same God, same Lord. It all has to do with your rain barrel. All has to do whether you're going to come bringing it with you, come expecting, or you're leaving it at home. What are you doing with it? What are you doing with your rainbow? Did you bring your rain barrel tonight? Amen. Did you come believing, expecting God by faith? Hallelujah. In the name of the Lord Jesus. God, I pray right now for the touch of God upon the congregation. I pray for the Spirit of the Lord to minister unto every heart. And I pray tonight, God, that we'll come ex with expectation and we'll come believing God by faith. Lord, I'm asking you to touch every heart. I pray that we'll come knowing that there's more. We serve a big God that we'll believe for big things. I pray in the name of the Lord God that you'll minister unto every heart, every soul, every person. Fill them with your Spirit, with your presence, with the Holy Ghost. We want the former and the latter rain. Lord, we want, the, we, want it, we want the sound of the abundance of rain. We want the Holy Ghost. We want revival. We want Jesus. Praise God. I pray tonight, Lord, that you will touch every person in this house. You might be here tonight and you say, Pastor, there's a need in my life. Would you pray for me? Just lift your hand and say, pray for me, Pastor. There's a need in my life. Maybe you need a healing touch of Jesus. Amen. Bring your ring barrel tonight. Amen. Just raise your hand. I need a healing touch. I need God. I need the physician. I need Jesus. Maybe you're here tonight and say, Pastor, I've never been baptized in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. And I want it. I want it. If that's you tonight, just raise your hand. Raise your hand. Pastor, I want it. I want it. I want it. I want it. It. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let it Whatever it might be. That's what I'm asking you to do tonight. Now listen very carefully what I'm going to say. I just simply want you to come and I want you to stand up here in a line in the front. Amen. I want you to stand in a line up front. And I want you to believe God. I want you to cry out to the Lord. If you receive one the baptism of the Holy Ghost, I want you to come. If you want prayer, I want you to come. I want you to come with your rain barrel. I want you to come believe in God tonight. Amen. I want you to come. If there's a need in your life, I want you to come. I want you to believe the Lord. I want you to believe God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I need a touch. I need heaven. I need the Lord. I need God's word. I need God's power. I need God's. I need God to hear my cry. I need God to answer my prayer. Come in the middle here. I need you to come up a little bit further. Come in the middle here, right in the front. I want you to come and face me, right there. Right, where's, right there. Oh, Sister Helen is just like that, right there. Just come and face me. Hallelujah. Come on, a little closer. If you want prayer, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, glory. Well, glory. The church showed up. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If you are seeking, first of all, I want to ask this. For the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking other tongues, I want you just to raise your hand tonight. If that's what we got, Jason, my son Matthew, amen. Anybody else tonight? Sister Mickey, Sister Mickey, Sister, Brother Scott, hallelujah. You want the baptism of the Holy Ghost? Well, God bless you, Brother Jim. All right, this is what I'm going to do. Okay, hold on. Anybody else tonight? Anybody else? I want you to come right here in the front. Just stand right here in the front, okay? Right here, right here. I want you to look at me like this. I just want you to face right here. I want you to come right here. Amen. Hallelujah. Anybody else? Anybody else? Come a little bit closer. A little bit closer. Anybody else tonight? Anybody else? All right. All right. Hallelujah. Brother Jim, come on over here. Brother Jim, where I can get to you. All right. Come on over here. Come right here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Come on over here. Veronica, come on over here. Where I can get to you. Come on over here. Praise the Lord. You can stand right there if you want, okay? 
Hallelujah. All right, this is what I want tonight. This is what I want tonight. I want a Holy Ghost tongue-talking believer to stand behind each one of these tonight. I want you to come up behind them, and I want you to stand right here. Amen. Come on. I want a Holy Ghost tongue-talking believer tonight. I want you to bring your rain barrel, okay? All right? Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Don't touch him yet. Don't touch him yet. Just hold on. Hey, Amen. I like your angst. I like your faith. Hey, Amen. Just hold on just a second. Hey, Amen. Behind each one of these tonight, I want you to listen. Listen, when it comes to the baptism of the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, it is a gift from God. It is a gift from heaven. It's a gift from the Lord. You can't make it happen. You can't work it up. Amen. You can't. No, it's, a, it's, it's of the Lord. It's of God. And all we can do is humble ourselves to the Lord and ask God for this gift. It comes to those that are saved. You got to be born again. The qualification is you have to know Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. Praise God. Hallelujah. And number two is this, that you're going to have to want it. You're going to have to seek God for it. We can pray for you, but you have to want it yourself in your heart. You have to desire that gift. You have to hunger for that gift. You have to do the asking. You have to do the crying out to God. We're going to support you. We're going to lay hands on you. We're going to pray for you. But you have to be the ones that are crying out to God. Now, you're going to, you're going to sense, you're going to feel, uh, for many people, it happened for me, uh, a bubbling forth that comes from your innermost being. I don't know how to explain it, but it comes from your innermost being. Praise God. Amen. Sometimes you might have stammering lips that begin. When you have stammering lips, don't try to stop it. Don't try to hinder it. Just go and let it flow. The Bible said it is a river that comes out of your innermost being. It's a river. It's a river of God. It's the river of life. It's the river of power. It's the river of the Holy Ghost. And tonight I'm believing that you're going to get it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So number one, you got to be saved. Number two, you gotta you gotta come expecting. Number three, you gotta do the asking. Amen. Number four, let me tell you, it is a gift that God wants you to have. He wants you to have it. Do put out of your mind, put out of your mind that it's not for you. That is not of God. It is a gift for every Christian, for every born again believer, regardless of denomination. Doesn't matter. Hallelujah. The Lord will do this. The Lord will fill you with the Holy Ghost. Now, in just a moment, I'm going to pray for you. Now, listen, church members, after I pray for them, I'm going to tell you to lay hands on them. And when you lay hands on them, I want you to lay hands on them speaking in other tongues. I want you speaking in other tongues, okay? Not in English. I want you speaking in tongues. Lay hands on them in just a moment when we do this, okay? All right, let's pray together. Are you ready, folks? God, the Holy Ghost, praise the Lord. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, we come to you. Lord, by faith tonight that we humble ourselves to the Lord Jesus Christ. We know and believe that the baptism of the Holy Ghost is for every believer. We know it is a gift from God, and God wants me to have that gift. And so, God, tonight, I pray that you'll touch, that you'll minister, and that you'll baptize every believer tonight with the Holy Ghost, with the initial evidence of speaking in other tongues as the Spirit of God gives them the utterance. So tonight, Lord, we come with our rain barrel and we come by faith. So we ask this now for these folks to be baptized in the Holy Ghost and with fire in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Now lay hands on them, church. Speaking in their tongues, lay hands on them. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Authority. In the name of Jesus, we see the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, we see the Holy Ghost. Oh, Lord. Receive the Holy Ghost. Jesus Hallelujah. Jason, ask him. Cry out to him. Ask him. Ask him. Hallelujah. In the name of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Receive the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Receive the Holy Ghost. Oh, bless my brother. Bless my sister, Lord. Hallelujah! 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 H
Don't try to figure it out. Just receive it. Just receive it. Just receive it. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Cry out to God, Jason. Cry out to God. Cry out to God, Veronica. Cry out to God. That's it. Come on. Just cry out to God. Cry out to God tonight. Cry out to God. In the name of Jesus. Make you cry out to God. I want you, Jesus. I want you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord. Let your spirit flow. Oh, God, I pray in the name of the Lord. I pray in the name of the Lord. I pray in the name of the Lord. Lord. Lay hands on them, speaking in other tongues, and the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I encourage you to cry out to the Lord. I encourage you to raise your hands unto the Lord. I encourage you to cry out to Jesus and say, God, baptize me in the Holy Ghost. I want the gift of the Holy Ghost. I want the gift of the Holy Ghost. I want the gift of the Holy Ghost. I want the Holy Ghost and fire. 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 I want it. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, Lord, we need you. Lord, answer our cry. Hear our prayer, Lord God. Minister, I pray. We brought our rain barrels tonight. We've come expecting. We want more. Jesus, 
Gather around of church and just pray for them. Pray for them. Pray for them. Believe God for them. Believe the Lord for them tonight. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You're gonna you're gonna sense a bubbling forth. You might have stammering lips. You just you just don't hold back. But just flow. Let it flow. Let it go. Let it flow. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord tonight. You want a refilling tonight? Come and pray for these. You'll be refilled. There's many times I've prayed for people to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and I was refilled myself. Hallelujah. The Lord touched me. I would go slain in the Spirit. The power of Almighty God would come upon me. Hallelujah. I'm telling you tonight, we can have revival. We can have a refreshing. We can have a move of the Spirit. My heart is open. I love you, Lord. I want you. I desire you. I hunger for you. I thirst for you. Jesus. 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 Just worship him and praise him. Jesus is the baptizer in the Holy Ghost. It's not by works. It's by faith. It's by faith. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm going to ask the church to come around here and just pray for them front and back. Pray for them tonight. Come on. It's okay. Come on around them. Get a hold of them. Pray. Believe in God. You're going to feel, you're going to send stammering lips. You just go ahead and let it happen. You let God do it. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Come on. Amen. Humble yourself to the Lord. Amen. Let there be a cry in your heart that says, I want God. Let there be a cry in your heart. I must have the Lord. Lord, we need you. I know that you want to baptize your people with the Holy Ghost out of fire. I know that you want them to have the power. We know the gift is of God. We know it's according to the word and it's in the Bible. I pray because we know we need it today if we've ever needed it before. Power for service and power for warfare. I pray, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus, I want you to cry out to God. Church, I want you to cry out to God. I want you to ask God. I want you to open yourself up. Oh, Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. 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 Oh, hallelujah. 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 I want the Holy Ghost. 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 Hallelujah. I want the Holy Ghost. I want the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 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 Refill us in the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. Jesus in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. In the name of 
Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Speak in tongues. Don't speak in English. Not in English, but in tongues. God will give you the language. Praise the Lord. We lead by faith. In the name of Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Sister, hallelujah. Jesus Come on. Let it flow. 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 Come on. Hallelujah. Let go. 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 In the name of the Lord, we see the baptism of the Holy Ghost, sister. Hallelujah. Baptize. I lay hands and partake the gift. In the name of Jesus. Lay hands on her. Lay hands on her. Lay hands on her. Jesus has given me. Oh Lord, open yourself up. Open yourself up to the Holy Ghost. Pray and ask Jesus to baptize you. He's the baptizer. Open yourself up to Jesus. Humble yourself to the Lord. Yield yourself to God. Your tongue, you yield your mouth. Don't try to make sense of it in your intellect. It's by faith in God. It's faith in God. Multiple tens of thousands have been baptized in the Holy Ghost through the centuries. Jesus has given me. Oh Lord, I open up my mouth. That's with me. Jesus, Jesus, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, receive the gift. Receive the gift. Amen. Receive the gift. Receive the gift. Receive the gift. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Receive healing. Receive healing in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, heal my brother. Send your word. Just send your word. Heal my brother. Heal him, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. God has set you free. God has set you free, Jason. Never go to back to the old past, the old ways, but you press on to Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. God has saved your soul. He wants to fill you with the Holy Ghost. He wants to fill you with the Holy Ghost.
Now, this is what I want you to do. Whether you received or not tonight, I just want you to thank the Lord. I want you to thank him. Just thank him. Lord, I love you, and I thank you, God. I thank you for your promise. I thank you for your word. I thank you for your blessing. I thank you for loving me. I thank you for the cross. I thank you for the blood. I thank you for redemption. I thank you for saving me. Thank you, Father, for giving me a new life. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. And I thank you ahead of time what you're going to do in my life. I thank you, God, for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I thank you. 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 Hallelujah. Praise God. I thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. He's a good God. He's a good God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to encourage you tonight to let this be the beginning of a new mindset. And that is every time, every morning, every day I get up, I'm going to bring my rain barrel with me. In my car, in my home, on my job, at school, at college, whatever it is, I'm bringing my rain barrel with me. Hallelujah. And I'm expecting and believing God to fill it. I'm expecting God for a miracle. I'm expecting and believing God for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I'm believing God for the gift. I'm believing the Lord to touch. I'm believing God to heal. I'm believing God to minister. I'm believing to hear from the Lord. Bring your rain barrel with you every time we have prayer meeting, every time we have service, every time on Sunday morning, Sunday night, or Wednesday night, or Tuesday night, women's Bible study or men's Bible study. Bring your rain barrel with you. Hallelujah. Say, God, I'm coming and I'm believing God. And I know that God will fill you. I know that God will fill that barrel. I know that God will touch you. I know that. I know that. I've come ready with expectation by faith. And I know that God honors faith. All throughout the Bible, we see God honoring faith. He will honor that. And he will touch you. He will touch you. He will fill you. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. He will revive you. And he will renew you. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I, I know I, I, before I got the baptism of the Holy Ghost, I was trying to understand it. And I was asking a lot of questions. And uh, they, I just didn't get it. There were times I prayed and prayed for it. And I just didn't get it. But then, then there came that Sunday morning unexpectedly. I came down to that altar, that octagon, to pray for healing. And when they began to sing the song and, and the, the pastors began to come out and before they could get to me I lifted up my hands to the Lord and I said dear Jesus amen that was it all of a sudden I heard the sound of a mighty rushing wind from heaven I tell you it was supernatural the power of God came upon me and I began to speak in other tongues as the spirit gave the utterance that same Holy Ghost will do the same thing for you he's no respecter of persons he's God Jesus is the baptizer hallelujah hallelujah it was that Sunday at that time at that moment I'd prayed before. I'd been up all night praying, seeking the face of God, crying out to the Lord. But I didn't receive it then. It was that Sunday morning. And I'm telling you, don't be discouraged, but I want you to be encouraged tonight because I want you to be more determined than ever. I'm going to open my heart up to God. I'm going to cry out to the Lord. I'm going to bring my rain barrel with me every time. I want to be filled. I want God to baptize me. Hallelujah. And God's going to do it. It might be in your car. It might be in your home. It might be in your house. It might be in the middle of a worship service. It might be at the altar. It might be at church. It might be at work. I don't know. But he'll do it. Amen. We have testimonies of people in this church baptized at home, baptized in the middle of a service, baptized here at the altar, baptized different places. God just met them where they were. God will do it for you. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God bless you, folks. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. You can be seated tonight. You can be seated. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. You're going you're gonna to have a personal revival. You're going to have an encounter with God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You're going to have it. It's yours. It's yours. Listen, it's a great day today. It's a great, great night tonight. Amen. Praise the Lord. We've heard from the word of the Lord. We've heard from heaven. I believe that with all of my heart. I'm excited for what God is doing in your life 
and also what he's going to do. Amen. Isn't God good? Isn't the Lord good? Praise the Lord. All right, let's stand together. Let's just give the Lord a hand clap of praise tonight. Give him praise tonight, okay? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, I pray your blessing on this church, your blessing on the body of Christ, my brothers and my sisters in the Lord. Bless their coming. Bless their going. May your face shine upon them, God. I pray that that world out there will see the glory of the Lord upon their countenance. Lord, let your love be renewed in each heart. Keep them safe, I pray. Bring us back Wednesday night, giving you honor and glory. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God bless you, folks. God bless you. Hallelujah. Have a wonderful night. Be safe going home. Love each other in the faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.